been standing there for a little while, trying to get my attention. Sorry, you know how into it I get when I'm exploring clues and trying to make connections between different elements of our case. Sorry, I didn't mean to ignore you. How are you doing? Did you find anything interesting over in the archives of the Historical Society? Hmm, interesting. Okay, let me write that down. Mm hmm By the north entrance, you say? Okay. Interesting. And were they large footprints or small footprints? Okay. Wow. This just keeps getting more and more puzzling. <sighs> I'm so glad to have your help with this case. This one really, really is tricky. Well, as you know, we basically have concluded that someone has been scaring off the night watchman at the Hendersonville Historical Society, pretending to be a ghost, so that they can sneak in and steal some of the valuable historical artifacts. But the question remains, who? Do you have any theories at this point? What do you think? Hmm, I agree. It probably does all circle back to one of the three top board members of the Hendersonville Historical Society. They are all quite prominent people and they would have the means to make such spooky shenanigans a reality. But what would their motives be? They all love the historical society. Why would they want to steal from it? I just don't know. Well, I do have some exciting news to share. That while you were over in the archives, I found several clues. Mm -hmm. And I was really hoping that you could help me inspect them, take a really, really close look at them, and see if we can figure out if they're connected to any of our suspects. Okay, well, before we do so, let's just review some of our information here. As I mentioned, there are three top board members of the Historical Society, and I do have my doubts about what their intentions are towards some of these artifacts and whether they might like to own them for themselves. So first, we have Mr. R. 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 Robson, Esquire. Second, Dr. Smith Smithington. And third, Lady Alexandria von Vanderglam. So let's inspect these clues I found and see if any of them might point to any of these suspects. Okay. Okay, great. I'm so glad to have your help. It's always wonderful to have you working with me on these cases. You know, like I said, sometimes Daphne and Fred get off to their own devices somewhere else, and Scooby and Shaggy are always following their stomachs. I'm sure they're at the delicatessen down the street. And sometimes I feel like you're the only one I can count on to really help me get to the bottom of things. Oh, well, thank you anyway. I, I really do appreciate you. Okay, let's get started. Let me show you. I'll put down my notes here. Get my handy dandy magnifying glass. It always comes in so handy. So, as I was searching around here in the areas of the historical society where we think the thief may have been, 
I found several items that are very, very interesting. The first is this shiny, vintage rhinestone brooch. Isn't it beautiful? It is quite lovely. And I noticed that the clasp here on the back looks like it may have come apart a little bit. So I think that this brooch may have fallen from the garment of whoever was in these hallways unauthorized. So I just want to take a close look at it here. Let me see. Well, as you can see, it has these multiple circles, multiple circles, multiple circles, multiple circles of gemstones. There appear to be one, two, three levels. You can see the gemstones are all intact. This is quite an ostentatious brooch. It's quite lovely and very, very sparkly. And it also has this one large rhinestone in the center. Hmm, yes, I think maybe I'd better inspect it with my light as well. Let me find, let me see, I'll use this light first. Let me see. Yes, okay. Wow, look how sparkly it gets in the light. It really is a beautiful piece sparkles through all those layers. Let me see, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, around the outer edge, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, and then the large shiny one in the center. Wow, well, this is quite a find. I just wonder who could have possibly dropped this or lost it so unusual that someone would leave something like this behind. I just don't know. Well, that's true. That is a possibility. I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's see. Okay, well, I guess, just to be safe, I should scan each of these clues with the groovy, groovy ghost light. I mean, we just want to be sure that there isn't any sign of supernatural residue on any of these clues. I mean, we pretty much have it confirmed that it isn't a real ghost that's been scaring away the night crew. It's definitely someone creating illusions, but I think we do want to be sure. So I'll just click on the groovy, groovy ghost light. Okay, Whew. no sign of anything unusual on this clue. Let's move on to clue number two. So, believe it or not, the second clue I found is even more ostentatious than this one. I found over on the floor over there, this bright red fuzzy glove. Let's take a look at this. I mean, this is something that someone with a high fashion sense would wear. It's got this bright red puffy fuzzy cuff and this sort of hound's tooth pattern on the front of the glove and then solid red on the inside of the glove. Let me just Oh my goodness, yes, it fits me very well. I hope it wasn't somehow me who got tricked into doing this. That would be quite the caper if a member of our gang was somehow responsible, but no, 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 I have far too strong a will for that. There's no way I could be hypnotized into doing something that was not on the up and up. But it is interesting to note that the person who wore this glove must have had hands. A 
about the same size as mine. Interesting. Well, let's inspect this glove a little more closely. I'll use this light first. And yes, it has these lines that go up and down, 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 up and down. All up and down the finger, the little finger, the ring finger, the middle finger, the pointer finger, and the thumb is just plain red. That's something to note. And then again, we have these fuzzy, fuzzy cuffs. The inside seems to be solid red as well. I just don't know. This is very unusual. Well, let's see if there are any ghost remnants or anything like that. Just to be safe, I'll do this initial fast scan mode just to see. Okay, nothing so far. All right, and now I'll click it into its higher mode. It's a very sophisticated tool, but it's tricky sometimes. at all to who these might belong to. I'm just not sure. Would you like to see it more up close? Okay, let me just show you. Yes, there are the fingers of the glove. And the palm of the glove. And then this fuzzy cuff, I mean. It really is quite striking. Hard to believe that someone would leave this behind and not notice. I just don't know. This is getting curiouser and curiouser. Okay, so moving on to the next clue that I found, I discovered this compact. Yes, can you believe it? It's actually quite heavy. Can you feel it? Yes, I can't believe that someone would drop this out of their pocket and not even know that it was gone. You can see it's quite shiny with these green metallic jewel tones on the front. And then when you open it up, there is a mirror inside. Once again, no indication of ownership or anything like that. It's very, very hard. Very hard to parse where this might have come from. You can see these little hinges on the back. Let's just give it a quick look as well. This will probably, yes, really, really, really bring out the shine in the front of this compact and the gold along the sides. It does have this hinge on the front here. It opens relatively easily. Hmm, let me just take a look. Let me just take a closer look. Hmm, yes. Well, I still can't see any indication. I just Oh, sorry, I just was getting lost in my own thoughts there, but I'm just so confounded by all of this. Well, let me check this quickly for any ghost residue, just to be safe. We do want to be thorough about this. No, not a sign of anything. Well, you know, I am truly, truly perplexed by this series of clues. I mean, 
we have this beautiful sparkly compact and we have this striking red glove hmm yes looking at it closely doesn't really doesn't really give me any more information although it is quite quite fuzzy the close-up fuzzies are quite impressive and then we have this brooch so so interesting Well, when I look at our list of suspects and think about who might be attached to these items, I can't help but immediately think of the highly stylish Lady Von Vanderglam. I mean, she is known to have a vast collection of vintage brooches, which she often wears. And this certainly looks like the kind of glove that she might have. She's known for her glamorous outerwear and fuzzy winter hats that she likes to wear. And then she does seem like the sort who might carry around such a bedazzled compact. But it just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, if she were the culprit, why would she leave these things just lying around everywhere? She seems like quite an intelligent woman, and I just think she'd be a little more stealthy than that, don't you? Let me just, let me just write down, let me see about the brooch and the glove and the compact and, let me see, and there were no, no ghostly residues. I'm, I'm just so stumped. Do you have any ideas at all? You found a clue? Oh my goodness, Jinkies, that's so exciting. Over by the north entrance where you were exploring? Yes, we thought that perhaps that's where someone was sneaking into the building after they had achieved their ghostly spectacles and scared everyone away. Well, I'm so excited. Let me see, what did you find? Oh, oh, how interesting. A marigold flower only slightly wilted, so it can't have been detached from its stem for very long. It still smells lovely. Wow! How unusual! Well, let's take a look at this. Yes, it's definitely a marigold. It definitely has that petal pattern, and it has the right shape and size. Hmm, let's see. Hmm, there don't appear to be any little bugs or anything hiding within the petals. That's interesting. And I doubt there'll be any ghostly residue, but we should, we should just check to be sure. Nope, nothing at all suspicious or supernatural in that way. This is so unusual. But you know, I feel like I've seen a marigold like this somewhere lately. I'm just not sure. I'm racking my brain as to where I've seen one. You know, we, we interviewed the board members and we spoke to the night crew and we interviewed some of the other members of the Historical Society. Was there anywhere that we saw a marigold like this? <gasps> you're right, you're right. Oh my goodness, let me check my notes. Yes, you're so right. When we interviewed the other board members, we interviewed Lady Von Vanderglam's nephew, Anderson Von Vanderglam and he was wearing a marigold in his buttonhole. Oh my goodness, this is groundbreaking. You're so right, both times we saw him, both at the board luncheon and when we interviewed them separately. He was wearing a marigold both times. Oh, must be like his signature look or something. You know, if you're going to be dastardly or villainous, you should never ever have a signature look. It will totally come back to haunt you. Wow. 
well, maybe Anderson von Vanderglam is trying to frame his aunt. It all makes sense. Maybe he left behind this brooch and this glove and this compact to make us think that she was here instead of him. Oh my goodness. Well, why do you think he would do that? You're right, you're right, of course. If Lady Von Vanderglam was found guilty of this crime and put in jail, then her nephew, Anderson Von Vanderglam, would have the full run of the Vanderglam mansion and all the fortune and all the lands. He could do whatever he wanted. Hmm, I wonder if he has any gambling debts or any other motivations that might cause him to want to take over the family fortune. Well, we'll have to look more into his background and question him again. We'll see if Fred and Daphne found out anything when they were interviewing the Von Vanderglam household staff and some others connected to the historical society. Yes, okay. And you never know, Anderson Von Vanderglam might have even gone to the deli. Scooby and Shaggy might have some information. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. You are so amazing. I'm so pleased that you found this marigold. This could just be the key to solving this whole case. Oh my goodness, okay. Well, let's gather up these clues and make sure we have everything. We have the marigold that you so expertly found. Oh, I'm so proud of you. And then we have the compact. And we have the glove. And we have the brooch. Okay, well now that we have all these things together and I've gathered up my inspection light and the groovy groovy ghost light and everything with that is all intact, I have my magnifying glass. Let me just take a few final notes here. Do you have any other thoughts? This is so exciting. Okay, and I hate to think of Lady Von Vanderglam being falsely accused. Oh, I always want to get the right villain and never get tricked by any of these tricky tricksters. Okay, well, I think I've got all the information down. Let's go find the rest of the gang and put all these clues together. We'll get to the bottom of this, I know we will and it's all thanks to you and your help. Come on.